Okay, sorry about this. Let's get started again. Okay, apology for this. So let me just re re rephrase the, uh, the situation because uh, we're doing a recording. So hopefully people who are not able to attend this session will be able to uh, watch the uh, replay. Okay, so let's start again. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Spring Tai Chi Wellbeing Festival and Chinese New Year of the Tiger celebration. Time has passed so quickly. At the blink of an eye, it is now 2022 and the year of the tiger, an auspicious year. In the last two years, lives have been difficult for many people all over the world. But thanks to online platforms like Zoom, we were able to connect on the air and keep our members and many health, wellness enthusiasts staying positive and healthy. Although COVID rules have been relaxed and restrictions are slowly lifted, but improvement on the pandemic situation is still slowly com slow coming. It looks like virtual training will be here to stay for a lot longer. However, there is always a silver lining on each cloud. And uh, virtual events organized for the De Yin and the BHQA have been greatly successful. And it is evident, especially in today's Spring Tai Chi Wellbeing Festival. There are more than 100 people. In fact, it's nearly 140 people signed up uh, from not only the UK, but Europe and further afield. So it's great to have all these people from all over the place, all over the world joining us. And also this afternoon celebration performances is even better because we are predicting to have at least 300 and could be up to 500 people globally watching the event. So it's gonna be, it's truly a worldwide celebration of the Chinese New Year of the Tiger. Okay, so let me say, have fun and enjoy yourself in this special occasion. Now, again, if you like to ask questions, please do, but through the chat function on Zoom. The, respective uh, speaker will hopefully answer your question in the chat as well, to, in order to ensure the, the teaching and the lectures are run smoothly and without stopping, okay? And during that training session, we will mute everyone in order to keep you know, the trainers or the teachers focused, okay? Without further ado, I let the Tai Chi and Wellbeing Festival begin. Let me introduce our first speaker, Master Fei Yip. Some of you uh, know a lot about Master Fei Yip, but there are new friends here joining us today. So I would like to give a very brief introduction about Master Fei. Fei comes from a traditional martial art family of four generations. And the Li family is one of the most respected martial art families in China. And her great grandfather, great uncle, and her father are some of the elite martial artists in China in the last hundred years. And in the last 40, 50 years, her father, Professor Li, has been one of the pillars of Tai Chi promotion in China and across the world. And her father is Professor Li De Yin. Now, Fei has been teaching Tai Chi and Qi Gong as well as martial arts in Europe, in UK, in the last, for the last 30 years. She has taught students in the UK, France, Germany, uh, Sweden, all over the place, all over Europe, as well as Australia and New Zealand, China, Japan. So therefore, she is a very highly respected, well experienced, with lots of knowledge. So hopefully you will enjoy her teaching today. Now, what she's gonna teach you is a very simple exercise that is gonna be for people who have at home with very small space. So let me pass it on to Faye, Master Faye. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Master Tari, for that lovely introduction. Uh, although this 10 step Tai Chi form, um, it's been introduced as a simple form. 
I want to stress the simple in the way that it's short, but not simple in terms of the principles of Tai Chi, in terms of the um, philosophies of Tai Chi. It, this short, um, short form actually capitalized the essence of Tai Chi, which I want to explore more with you in tomorrow's in-depth workshop. And today we only give a flavor. Uh, due to the uh, pandemic, we all have to find new ways of exercising and to make a long, uh, a sort of limited space uh, to practice what the quality of Tai Chi. So today, in this short session, I want to highlight some of the important quality of our practice. And it's not about the quantity, the number of movement. More important, it is about the quality of the movement. I would like to share a little bit of the um, uh, my PPT. Let me just, okay, I will replace. Yeah, okay. And you more um, of the PPT will be shared tomorrow. Okay, but today, let me just start from here. Okay. It has the simple, as I said earlier, it only has 10 steps. 10 steps means 10 movements, including opening stance and closing stance. However, when you look through this slide, you, I want you to draw your attention to some of the key um, movements in your mind. And then we stand up and experience some of these key uh, requirements. First movement, all, as always, is opening stance. The opening stance, in straight away, you need to enter a frame of mind that is calm and tranquil and peaceful, have the presence and the feelings of qi. Even though the movement is kind of simple, but what's initiating the opening and the beginning of the feeling, the connection, it's so, so important. And there are a few technical features. If you knew, to Tai Chi, we, we, we need to, uh, right from the beginning, it's like the universe transform itself into an orderly, the um, energy that spread when, when we're doing daily chores is not in a good order. We carry a lot of, um, if you like, cluttered energy around us, and there's a process in doing Tai Chi, we're clearing this clattering energy. And this clattering energy can get stuck in our body and becomes a stagnation and blockage, which will over time lead to physical problems. So the practice of Tai Chi is a process of clearing our energy pathways. So from right from the beginning, the opening stance, there are a number of in key important um, requirements and principles that we need to be aware and follow the requirements. The second movement is called uh, repulse monkey without the footwork, or like curling and practice all the arms move. And there are a number of technical features as well as the feelings that I want uh, we need to pay attention to the connections between the arms movement, the flow of the arms, the rotation of the torso. They're all there for uh, health reasons to clear and the declustering of the stagnations of our energy. And of course, a build up of strength to protect our uh, joints important joints in the body, like the ankles, the knees, and the waist. This will repeat, even though it's within one movement, this will repeat um, a couple of times. Num movement three is uh, called brush knee twist step. If you have done the 24 step, you would be familiar with this movement. And this, the beauty of this form is, is on the spot, we only we don't move far away from the center. We practice movement 
left and right. So we develop the left side and right side of the brain to balance, to improve our brain function and develop equally the strength and coordination left and right. So brush knee twist steps uh, in Yang style, I will explain and take you through step by step more in detail tomorrow. But today we're only going to have time to have a taster. Again, you can see uh, in a photo shot, it's left and right side and key features uh, will be stressed. Bear in mind the quality of the movement or the principle of our Tai Chi is instilled in every movement. Don't matter. It doesn't matter about the qual how many movements we're practicing. Every single movement it capsulizes the deep. Oh, it was an echo uh, sound. Sorry. Can you turn your Uh, Faye, you are muted. You are on mute. Yeah, I'm mute everybody. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I was saying it doesn't matter how many movements you are practicing. The most important in your practice is the quality of every movement, and that your movement should be capitalized and capitalized in all of the Tai Chi principles. This way, you will be able to get most your health benefits. And so it, the um, movement of the chi can be ignited and initiated. And the requirement of each and every movement is designed to do this. Movement four, okay, let me just, uh, okay, my computer, um, next slide. Let me see why is the slide is not moving. Okay, let me try this again. Okay, now, movement number four is parting horse's mane. We again, we turn left and right to repeat this posture. This posture appeared in 24 uh, step movement. So the principle is the same there, except the connections uh, left and right, we need to adopt and learn. During these transitions, I want to uh, explain uh, uh, tomorrow more about how to maintain the smoothness, how to understand the rhythms, the beginning and the ending of the movement, how to carry the flow smoothly and seemingly like the cloud or like the flow of water and without any jerky movement or sudden uh, speed up. Okay, so uh, parting horse's mane will flow into the wave hands like clouds. Every single one in this set of movement is a representative of Yang style Tai Chi. So the wave hands is another um, symbolic, um, carries the yin and yang, the changes of yin and yang, substantial and inst insubstantial energy changes. And like uh, the sun and moon, and they move in orderly fashion. It doesn't matter which season, you always, the change of yin and yang, always see the rise of the sun and the uh, sort of change into the rise of the moon. So the, this movement is very interesting to practice in yang style. Uh, let me move on to wave hands to the next symbolic movement golden rooster standing on one leg practice the ability improve our balancing skills uh, improve our strength in our legs our routines so the uh, how to uh, reduce the possibility of fall and increase the ability to balance is a one of the main benefits to health in tai chi practice and in this short form, we we very much pay attention on to how to connect and centralize that body weight and still maintain the graceful and flow of the Tai Chi characters. 
So again, you can see left and right side of balance. And balance to give a little bit more practice or development is about strength. Kicking heel kicks is about both balance, but also flexibility and control uh, of the main muscle groups. And this posture is suitable for everyone. Some of you thinking, oh, I, I, I can't do kick. It can be adapted to any level and suitable for all ages and abilities. You just need to find and listen to your body and find your own comfort zone. Okay, so this again is left and right. We, uh, one thing throughout this short and on the spot Tai Chi form is a exercise equally symmetrically left and right. The next representative for Yang style is the grass the peacock's tail, Lan Chue Wei. And this uh, is such a core movement in every. Um, every style of Tai Chi, Yang style, Chen style, Sun style, and Wu style, we, we always have this posture because it has a number of key techniques like the ward off and pull back. And we always understand that Tai Chi is softness, overcome hardness, and we don't create a force against the force, collision, collision. And how do we understand this? It's this posture is a very representative to uh, have the ex understanding of how the softness can overcome, how neutralize can be used to overcome the hardness, brutal force, and the principle of Tai Chi as a martial art. In this posture, it's very, um, very much the focus to understand the principle of how the water seems to be uh, with no, no strength, can overcome the rocks, can shape the rock. The rock is very, very hard, but in the flow and under the flow of water, the hard rock can change shape. All the edges, the hardness can be neutralized. And in this posture is a very um, capitalized, a very explanatory, and the principles are very profound. And this involves four techniques, the ward off, pull back, and neutralize, roll back, and press forward. Peng, lu, ji, an. Good, so even though it's under one name, however, it's a long, uh, four techniques, a long posture. Moving on to the next movement, Movement nine is cross hands. And this is towards the end of the, this short form. After we've done our uh, practice, uh, grass the peacock's tail, left and right, we move on to cross hands. This is to conclude yin energy, yang energy, yin and yang return to one. And so we close, consolidate all the practice, this substantial, the insubstantial, the changes of the rise and falls of the energy. We reunite, we turn to a, a you, unite balance, cross hands. And finally, return chi, return the energy back to the beginning and to the state of nothingness. So even though this uh, this set of sequence is very short, not long. Um, we sometimes use the words as simple. I want to have one clear message today. Simple doesn't mean simple. Simple in the length, but not simple, and it's profoundly not simple in the its philosophy and principle. And now I we'll have the last few minutes inviting you to stand up in your space and to have a go with me. Now you understand the names of the posture involved. Let's have a go, okay? So please stand up and uh, find yourself a safe space. 
we don't need a great deal of space, but you still need to have a space about a, an arm length. Okay, just adjust my camera. Okay, see if you can um, see me head. I'm just testing. Okay, good. To be able to, uh, you know, for you to follow me easier, I will turn myself round and give you the follow me angles. Now, if I turn this way, so it's like in a real class, you will follow me. I just clarify the directions. What where I am, I'm facing is 12 o'clock. You will be facing the camera. So this is the camera in front of you, it's your 12 o'clock. I'm facing the back wall, this is my 12 o'clock, and therefore uh, 3 o'clock is to my right, 6 o'clock is to my back, which is the camera, and 9 o'clock is to my left, okay? Even though we only feel centered ourselves around here, uh, in this box, it's still in your mind, you need to have a sense of direction. Now take a moment to arrive on your spot, in your space. Again, never rush into the form and allow yourself, your mind, enter into a frame of mind that is calm, quiet, peaceful, with a sense of contentment. Chin tucked in, crown up, tongue touching the roof of the mouth. Smooth your breathing. And ready to begin. Take half a step to your left. Centralize your weight. And ready. From state of nothingness, we begin to tidy. Rise, raise your hands. Diagonal view, maybe a slight more helpful. Soften your knees and sink. It will sink. Exhaling on the downwards and in your own time, let's move into repulse monkey. Open the palms, turn, keeping your knees forward and your toes and knees facing forward. Only focus on the torso, turn and turn to your right. Curl the right palm in and tremble. Turn back, push and pull. Push and pull. Next, we're turning to the left. Rotate the waist. The waist is rotating, keeping the knees forward facing 12 o'clock. Try to feel that rotation. And curl the left palm in. And push forward and pull back. The side view, withdraw the hands to the tummy and the front pushing hands right in front of your, in line with your nose. Okay, sitting with the back nice and straight. Let's practice one more time. Turn to right, curl in, turn back, push, and the left. Open, curl back, and push and pull. Good, and now we're moving on to the next one. So shift your weight over to your right leg and draw the left in. Extend your right arm to the corner, 45 degrees. And turn towards nine o'clock, step. Nine o'clock step and curl the palm. Okay. And sit back, one, turning the toe in, and trans away to the left. Draw the right foot in, extend your left hand. Step into three o'clock, now we're working the opposite way. Brush knee, twist step. Let's practice. Once more to each side. Just on the spot, sit back, turning the toe in, and 
Trunk the weight to the right leg, extending your right arm, draw the left foot in. Remember, we talked about in our weekly classes about the stillness and motion in Tai Chi. When you move, you see the stillness in your movement. Transfer weight back, draw the right foot in. Seven toe palm. And brush knee to step. Okay. And now let's change. Shift your weight and hold your weight to the right. Hold your ball. Step back to the nine o'clock. We'll do the passing the horse's mane. Because of the, the time. We won't do too many repetitions now, just one on each side. Passing horse's mane, left and right. Okay, let me just move back a little bit so you can see my foot. Good, and change into wave hand posture. Wave hand to the left, step in, turn to the right, step out. And turn to the left and return. Step back with your left foot from in. Turn to left. Stepping out. Good. And ready to change. Moving on to the next one. Balance. Standing up. Golden rooster on one leg and soft landing, seeking the stillness in motion and balance like a strong grounded tree. Ready to change again. Gather your hands, raise the right knee, and gently do a kick, heel kick, and step back. Stepping down, shift your weight, raise the left knee towards the left corner. We'll do the heel kick to the other side. Back onto your spot, hold your ball, let turn to the three o'clock again, ward off, seek your stillness in the movement. Neutralize and return. Press forward. And roll back. Neutralize again. Be water. Be as soft at the same time as refilling as the water. And change to the other side. Hold your balloon. Step to the left. Nine o'clock now. Palm, ward off. Like a big balloon. Every part of your body is hands. Your hands is your hands. Your shoulders is your hands. Your waist is your hands. Your knees is your hands. Your back is your hands. Every part of your body is as sensitive as your hands. We neutralize again and again, building strength. And now we're ready to move, return yin and yang back to cross hands. Yin, yang, return. Draw balance across. Draw the right foot in. We're still on our spot. And finally, to close, separate your hands, floating your hands down. And now, draw slowly your left foot back. Return to the state of nothingness. Throughout our 10th step, as you can see, even though 
we don't have time to go any deeper. But tomorrow, we will, I will be able to have more time to explain more profoundly. I hope you already can experience the characters of Tai Chi, why we describe Tai Chi movement like the passing cloud, like the flow of river. And it's that quality, that we, physical requirement will bring the whole set of health benefit, benefits, both from the mind, but at the same time, it works on medication. The best form of medicine is our own inbuilt, built-in internal intelligence of energy healing. Okay, I think that's all I have time for, for my session. And uh, I'm three minutes over, <laughs> but uh, there was a little bit introduction from Tari. So um, I hope you have enjoyed that little, um, little taste with me. If you like to do more quickly, sign up for tomorrow i have only a, a last few posh, uh, few space left okay sign up quickly if you still want to do uh, this beautiful step tomorrow okay i'm going to hand back to tari yeah. okay okay, okay. Yeah. okay. okay. as faye said tomorrow faye is going to spend a whole day from 10 to 4 uh focusing on exploring the steps the balance and the movement as well as the benefits of this Tai Chi 10 step and it's suitable for people of all levels, whether you are a novice wanting just to get health or you are experienced or advanced instructor wanting to know more about the essence of Tai Chi. I have actually put it on the uh, chat, the link where you can go in later, maybe copy the link first and go in later and have a look and then hopefully sign up, yeah? And if you're not sure, you can always go onto the Doyin website, okay? And you'll be finding the detail. Now, the next one I would like to introduce is Yu Feisha. Feisha. Now, Feisha is the director of the Confucius Institute at the University of Central Lancashire and has been helping to promote traditional Chinese culture and languages and build friendship and cooperation between the UK and China. She was awarded recently the Preston Mayor's Corona's Pandemic City Hero Award uh, for offering nearly 300 free online Tai Chi and Qigong classes to local communities since April 2020. Feisha is also a qualified Deyin Tai Chi Chuan Institute instructor and certified BHQA instructor. And she has been teaching Tai Chi and Qigong for many years and has in-depth knowledge and experience in Tai Chi and Qigong practice. So without further ado, I will put her into everybody's spotlight so you can see, okay? All to you now, Faisia, okay, if great. I can find you. Well, thank you very okay. much for uh, Terry's uh, wonderful introduction. And uh, thank you, Fei, for providing this platform for me to share my passion of uh, Tai Chi and Qigong with everybody. And uh, I'm going to share my screen. Are you seeing it now? Is everything all right? Good. Yes. Yes, great, that's wonderful. So uh, my talk today is about Hu Shi Qigong Qing Hu Nian. We want to welcome in the year of the tiger with some very classic Daoying movements that are inspired by tiger. And for the content of today's workshop, we'll very quickly talk about what is qi, what is qigong, what is Daoying, and how does this qi relate to life and good health. We'll look at the perspective uh, from traditional Chinese medicine theory and the relevant uh, meridians. And then we want to talk about, about why tiger? And there are so many animals. Why do you choose tiger as one of the few uh, animals that we, in both uh, Kung Fu and in Qigong, we keep referring back to? And then I'm um, going to very quickly mention four typical Qigong routines with movements inspired by the tiger. 
but because of time, we'll only have uh, time to experience, to try uh, a few movements, not all of them. And then I want you to be able to join me and have a go. But before we start, I want, just want to send you some good wishes. And I typed in here, typical Chinese uh, year of tigers, uh, good wishes. We normally say to Chinese friends and why not to English friends as well. One of them is Hu Hu Sheng Wei. So wish you just as brave and as uh, uh, a powerful as a tiger. Because tiger, culturally, they symbolize strength, power and bravery. And I believe uh, Master Terry's name has got a character of Wei as well. Absolutely, uh, yes. My yes. name is Wei, Qi Wei. Yep. So, so uh, this is my year. <laughs> yeah, so you know, the sort of uh, uh, a tiger bravery and power, all this, they come together in the minds of the Chinese. And then the next, uh, the, the, the middle uh, greetings or good wish we give people is to wish you your life is like Sheng Nong Huo Hu. Sheng Nong Huo Hu, they mean sort of a, a very lively dragon, a very bouncy tiger. This suggests vitality. And so we, we would say Sheng Nong Huo Hu. And the third one, which I love, is Ru Hu Tian Yi. So we wish your career, your business, Ru Hu Tian Yi. So like a tiger, tiger is already very powerful, very strong. But as if you're like a tiger, you add your wings. So you've got wings on a tiger. That is, suggests that your business will go from strength to strength and everything will be even better, stronger, higher, etc. So that's my good wishes to you. Right, now let's very quickly look at uh, uh, qi. What is qi gong? What is dao ying? Now qi, if you just look at the Chinese character, it could mean air or breath, but really when it comes to qi gong, it's far more than that. It refers to this uh, vital life force. And in TCM terms, you can also see it as energy. And we can further divide the qi into yuan qi, which is this almost like a prenatal qi you were born with, your parents has given you. The moment that, in a way, you were conceived, you were educated, that, that prenatal, uh, prenatal qi. And then we have got the zhen qi, wei qi, ying qi, so real qi, and the, the qi that guards the body, et cetera, et cetera. I think uh, if you have, uh, if you're interested, you are interested to find out more, uh, BHQA runs instructor course and they have uh, TCM elements, which uh, I think Faye and Terry got very experienced TCM doctors, which will go into more details about the different qi and how we can cultivate the qi. Okay, now qi gong, there are many different explanations. Some will say, well, it's energy work. I did a quick uh, uh, search on the internet. It says it's a Chinese system of physical exercise and breathing control relating, related to Tai Chi. Some would say it's an ancient form of yoga that has been around for thousands of years. Some say it's a system of coordinated body posture and movement, breathing and meditation used for the purpose of health, spirituality and martial art training. So we talked about the San Piao He Yi, the synchronized three, synchronized three things together, breathing, physical movement and the mind. Okay, Dao Ying. Dao Ying literally means to guide. So a lot of the health Qi Gong uh, set, at the moment there are 10 sets that's being promoted. They have another name is called the Dao Ying. For example, the most, my favorite one is the Dao Ying 12, Dao Ying Yang Sheng Gong Shi er Ba. So they use the word Dao Ying rather than Qi Gong. But I don't think we need to be that uh, hung up about whether it's Dao Ying or Qi Gong, just see it more or less as synonyms. And the principle is the same. We lead the body to flow, uh, to create harmony and balance. We also stretch the body to gain flexibility. So, and the, the Chinese, I think a, a Master Fei just mentioned before, is this sort of, a, you, you heal yourself through the, using the energy. So uh, we say, well, you can have a drug cure, but food cure is better. And better than food cure is sleep cure. If you are able to sleep well, then you'll be healthy. And then even better than sleep cure is qi. 
if you are able to utilize your qi to make sure your qi flows in an unhindered way, then you'll be very strong and healthy. That's the aim. Uh, now, how does it relate to life and good health, which we mentioned before? And typically, we say dao qi ling he ying ti ling rou. So it's to lead the qi flow to create harmony and balance in the body, and also to stretch the body to gain flexibility. And the balance, we talked about the yin yang balance. I think it's important to bear in mind that the balance here we, are talk, we talk about is not the static balance, it's a dynamic balance. So through the qigong movements, the uh, Master Fei just demonstrated before, is the transition, is the dynamic balance between the yin yang, left and right, front and back, etc. And now you can see the image there with some hose pipe, and you think, well, what's that for? Uh, we, we believe that qi needs to flow very smoothly, unhindered in, within our body. Some use the word channel, or a pathway, uh, Master Fei just used the word pathway, and all meridians, these words, you can see, they are all the same, just basically where the energy flows. And you, if you see the, the pathway is, is blocked or the, the pipe is blocked, then the energy don't flow well. In TCM terms, if there is any blockage, it leads to pain. And if you want to, get rid of the pain, eradicate the pain, you need to make sure the pathway of energy is working without any clings there. So it just flows well. And the whole purpose of Dao Yin is using the body, you stretch the body so that the pipes, the water pipes or the, uh, the energy pathways is smooth. There is no, no, no blockage there. So stretch the body, ensure the meridians or the channels, whichever word you want to use, are in perfect condition for unhindered qi flow. There is another dynamic about the qi is we were born to that, that prenatal qi is, is fixed amount, almost like a seed as a gas cylinder. Throughout our life, in everyday living, we consume some qi. So the moment you finish all the qi, then the, the, the person dies. In Chinese, we've got a saying of duan qi. So that, that is that. But we could still, there are ways of replenishing the qi. One is through eating healthy, nutritious food. So all the little finer particles can be, can be transformed into uh, energy, into qi. And then the other one is cai qi, to get the qi from the universe. So at the beginning, sometimes we zhan zhuang, we do a pole stand or uh, some of the qigong movements and tai chi movements is the same. We gather the qi from the universe, the, the qing qi, the zhen qi from the universe, and we guide it into our body. At least that's what we do in our mind. So we mentioned before, we want to, we want to ensure the sufficient and unhindered qi flow to promote health. We talked about the synchronizing the body, the, the, the uh, breathing and the mind. So mind leads the qi, qi leads the blood, blood circulates, circulates well, dispels illness. So the, the Chinese way, the TCM way of thinking about exercise is different. Is that we have to, the body has to be to move, but it's unlike the Olympic slogans of uh, faster, higher, stronger. I'm sure there are, there are uh, uses, there are good places for, for those type of uh, exercise. But the TCM advertise it is uh, advocates is gentle, stretchy exercise uh, combined with meditation. That meditation could be static sitting meditation. It could be like Tai Chi. We also call it as uh, meditation in motion. So the key notion for the mind's uh, concentration is we just want the mind to be there, but not to focusing excessively. Otherwise, there, there could be the danger of Zhou Huo Ru Mo because the, it could lead to deviation, that could lead to problem. And so the reason thinking about it is water can float a boat, but when it's too much turbulence, it could sink the boat. Fire can bring warm, but too much, it can also burn. So what we want is slow, gentle movements to encourage delicate, constant, deep and long abdominal breathing. Right, so why tiger? Uh, 
here that I just want to identify four classical classical Daoying movements. One of them is from uh, Wu Qingxi, the Five Animal Play, and Yi Jingjing, Jing, also medical qigong and Daoying for twenty four solar terms. So the tiger play in Wu Qingxi, the first animal is the uh, tiger. I'm sorry, the five animal play. The first animal is the tiger. So it, Doctor Hua Tuo, over two thousand years ago, nearly two thousand years ago, created this set imitating the animal movements. Tiger, bear, crane, uh, monkey, and uh, deer, and we will do some tiger movements in a minute. And then there's another very very famous uh, health qigong set. It's called the Yi Jing Jing, the classics for strengthening our tendons and muscles. Reputedly, it's coming from coming out of the Shaolin Temple in the in the Tang Dynasty. There are still debates whether it really did or not, but it doesn't not really matter. Monks are supposed to sit down and do a lot of sitting meditation, but sitting for a long time also hinders the the blood and qi flow, so that they need to do some exercise. And this set of routine really emphasize the spinal flexibility. And in a minute, when we do the movement, you see that we want to encourage the spine to be very flexible to move to help the rise of the yang qi at the back and sinking of the yin qi at the front. Uh, there are also movements that I want to uh, uh, remind us that when we do Taiji on Qigong, we don't just look back to history, to the classics. Uh, Taiji and Qigong is revolving and it is changing. Uh, this one, the sleeping tiger pouncing at its prey, it's a movement from the Yi Jing Jing that came out from the uh, Shaolin Temple, but it has been modified. So in a minute, if we have time, we'll do a, try a little bit of that movement created by uh, Bai Jingdang. And then because of Chinese culture have a long history that we call it this, this, uh, the Chinese wisdom of time, China being an agricultural and agrarian country, the seasonal changes are most important. It affects people's life more than perhaps some other culture, cultures. And uh, one of the things that we do is we divide 365 days into 24 little segments. And in each segment, there is a little routine that you're supposed to do. Then you exercise, and then it, it helps the, the body to be in harmony of nature. That is a classical teaching from Taoism. Now, here, I just give you the quick uh, a few uh, images to show by uh, Master Zhang Mingyang. He is the uh, lineage holder of the Emei school of uh, uh, Qigong. This one is the time in the summer. Is you're supposed to do it in the in the depth of the middle of the summer, and it's the sitting tiger glaring. So by having your paws down and looking up or side, either ways, it helps the 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 qi flow. And the purpose is to get rid of any excessive dampness in the spleen. Okay, so now very quickly look at why tiger. Uh, tiger in Chinese we say Bai Shou Zhi Wang, so it's king of the forest. So it's very, it's got fearsome glare and rapid leap of strong force, powerful paws and strong teeth and jaws. But how, how does it relate to the, to the body? Because uh, for us, it relates to the body in the sense of uh, the liver. So we work on the, on the liver the lungs, the kidney, and uh, even, even the, the teeth, because it's, it thinks it's like the manifestation, the end of the bones, et cetera, and the gum related to the spleen. So every part of our body is related to the, to the internal organs. And the leaping movements, now with the leaping movements, when you are arching back and then leaping forward, you extend the spine, and activating the conception and governing meridians, stimulating the flow of the yin, qi, and the yang, qi. So again, this is the yin-yang balance. And raise the head or lowering the head, again, it stimulates different acupuncture points. Uh, look, when you are looking up, you press on the da zhui xue. And then when you look down, you stimulate on the lian quan xue. So Lian Quan is sort of guide, it's very important for the yin meridians at the front. 
and da zhui very important for the young meridians coming up uh, at the back. In a minute, if we have time, we'll do the sleeping tigers. So looking at how long, low lunge stretches the front of the leg, and that stimulates the spleen to generate uh, blood. Spleen to, related to our digestion, we talk about how do we replenish the qi, we replenish qi by eating healthy food. But if you only eat and it's not digested, not absorbed by the body, it's a total waste of time. So you need to have strong spleen we don't just mean that organ, but it's the whole system, the spleen system, so that you make the best of the food that you are eating. It generates blood. Blood pushes the qi. A uh, uh, blood dies the qi. Uh, now, next, we'll, uh, related to human body in, in, in terms of the TCM terms, so the eyes it related to the liver, we say the gan kai chao yu mu, so the liver meridian, so sort of like the starting point is the eye. So when you do the tiger movements, you're supposed to open your eyes wide. You open it, it, it there's the glare like the tiger. The front and the back of the spine is the conception and governor channels. And then the paws, are including the fingers and the toes, there are the weld acupuncture points, the well acupoints at the tip of the fingers and the toes. Okay, so we want to encourage the qi flow to the extremities. And Lao Gong is in the center of your palm. And that also is very, very important. So when you do the tiger claw, you, you want to be, the, you feel the qi there as well. And health uh, longevity also uh, corresponds to the grip of your fist. Sometimes when we measure how strong a, a person is, we look at its grip okay, and test that. Uh, and the, the tiger play in Wu Qin Xi, the five animal play, there's the tiger claws, look at the toes, etc. We're going to try it in a minute. Okay. So we won't have time to go through this. Uh, let's look at the two movements of uh, Wu Qin Xi. And one of them is Hu Ju, tiger raises his paw. So please, if I could invite you to stand up and we could do this. The Hu Ju, you make a tiger claw, Make sure you bend each knuckle coming inwards and then making sure your hu ko, so we call it this, the web of your, your palm, we call it the tiger mouth. Hu ko yuan chen, we want it to open wide, so not the small one, so open wide. Okay, so that is the tiger claw. When you do the tiger, uh, do the hu ju, tiger raises his paw, you are looking up or down, stimulating lian quan xue at the front, guiding the yin, uh, energy channel, and then da zui xie at the back for the yang energy channel. And the hu pu is the tiger pouncing at its prey. Uh, again, if, when you are stretching up or down, you see there is, there is a little bit of a back bend as well, and then you're pouncing forward. So it requires the flexibility of the spine. And you see on this diagram, so from the base way in there, the, the yang energy rises along the back of your, your spine. It comes up to the, the, the head and then it comes down and then coming back down to hui yin. So it travels, it forms a xiao zhou tian, the small cosmos. And you see the da zhi and lian quan xie when you are looking up and down, just, just do those two movements. Okay, and then the tiger pounce movements just very quick pictures to show you, which you'll be able to find all these pictures uh, on the internet. Okay. We're not sure whether we'll have time to talk about the, a variation or a modified version of the uh, Pushi, the sleeping tiger pouncing at its tail. Right. Okay, could I invite, I'll stop sharing. Could I invite you to stand up, find yourself a space and Let's have a let's have a try. Okay. okay. We only have a few minutes. So if you could uh, have your feet together, stand naturally upright. We'll try the five animal plays, the tiger play. In here, I'm your mirror. Soften the knees and the left step, slowly peel your left foot off. Take the left step, shoulder width, put it down, toes down, peel down, the whole foot down. Good. 
breathe in, send your fingertips down first. As you breathe in, slowly raise both hands 45 degrees, pointing to the corner of the room, and get the chi back. Breathe out and sinking down, guiding the chi down. Now let's start. Because you've just done the exercise with Fei, I assume that you've all warmed up. So your palms press down in front of the, the hip height. Okay, all the fingers stretched out. And then in here, start bending your straight fingers into a tiger claw. And then bring your baby fingers, bring the fingers in, starting from the baby finger, make them into a fist. And slowly as you breathe in, as if you're dragging a heavy weight up to the chest, slowly release the fist into palms, turn the palms up and look up as you stretch up. Eyes looking at your uh, palms, all the fingers stretched out. Now in here, curve the fingers into tiger claws and then slowly, slowly make them into fists. And imagine you are dragging a very heavy weight down. Fist coming to the chest. Relax the fist into palms. Press down. When you press down, remember to look down. We are massaging, pressing on the Lian Quan Xie at the front. Okay, let's do it again. The palms pressing down, all the fingers stretched out. Curve the fingers at each knuckle formed into a tiger claw and make them into fist. Tight fist, drag this heavy weight up, middle finger pressing on Lao Gong and slowly open, turn the palms up and push upwards, lifting this heavy weight up. Eyes looking up. Now look up, massage the Da Xie at the back. And now, again, curl the each knuckle and very slowly make the fist and drag this heavy weight down. The chest open into fist and press down. So this is Hu Ju, tiger, stretching its paws. Next, we are going to do is the hu pu, the tiger pouncing at its uh, prey. So I'll do it at the uh, angle diagonally. So here, make two hollow fists. The fists come up along the side and just coming up and up and up. So you have a very long spine, paws pointing to the front, eyes looking forward and downwards. And in here, Take a deep breath in and then pounce forward, a quick out breath. Your tiger paw, the hands is like the uh, tiger uh, paws, reaching forward. So in a way, you are having a long stretch. So a long spine, eyes looking forward and downwards, your paws reaching to the front. And then in here, soften the knees, bring the paws back and push the knees forward and a hip forward and arching back and here slowly shift the and bring your left leg up as you bring your left leg up raise your paw up as well and take a left step diagonally coming down okay again eyes looking forward the paws pressing down toes up feel the stretch and slowly come up again Slowly rise, breathing in, raise both paws, coming up, eyes looking forward and downward, a quick out breath, okay, reaching forward, your, your paws reaching forward, eyes looking forward, feel the long stretch, tailbones back, and slowly soften the knees, push the knees forward, keep forward, arch back, and raise, Raise your leg and mm. move down. Okay, one and more minute, Fei Okay, good. Yeah, coming up. Okay, yeah. So that is the tiger uh, pouncing at its prey. And next, 
we would just want to very quickly ex uh, talk about the uh, push the sleeping tiger. Okay, so with, with the sleeping tiger, you come up and in here, coming forward, imagine, okay, pounds forward. Okay, your claws press down, sinking down, and then come up and pounce. When you're pounce, well, after the uh, two pounds, then you support yourself, hands on the floor, but only toe, only fingers, not the whole palm, okay? And in here, you can sink down, sink, and then you arch back. So you, you again, the flexibility, or you are what you are doing, you are pouncing, bending backwards. And then in here, in the uh, modified version, you come up, you raise your leg, sanju ni. So here you are further strengthening the power of your limbs. And then you sink down and then come up and you sink down and come up and slowly coming back. Uh, whatever is done on one side, we do it on the other side. So you're starting in here, coming back. So be careful, uh, uh, watch for the spine. So curve to the front and arching okay, back. 30 seconds. Okay, good. So hands pressing down, fingertips on the floor. Okay, sinking back and arch back. Feel your spine arching back. And here come up, raise the leg and come down. Raise up, coming down and raise up and come down. Okay, I'm sorry we have run out of that. I haven't got enough time. But okay, let's thank collect you. ourselves, Thanks breathing out. in, sinking down. Okay, good. Right. Hope it gives you a small taste about the tiger inspired movements. Thank you. Thank you, Feisha. Very good. And uh, hope everybody enjoyed this little session here. Unfortunately, because we, well, not unfortunately, but uh, as the time is quite restricted, we've got so much to offer. And um, as the day in the BHQA are dedicated and committed to provide uh, all enthusiasts and our members uh, Qigong exercise and Tai Chi exercise for health and well-being and is suitable for and people of all ages or conditions like Fascia just demonstrate to you. There are some simple exercises that are slightly more demanding to fit your needs. So it is well worth, if you're not already a member, join us and be part of the family and enjoy the actual exercise and be healthy and be happy. Okay, and as Faisa already mentioned at the beginning, now we run national health Qigong instructor courses annually, and the next one is coming up in March. So anyone with some experience in Qigong and Tai Chi or Tai Chi, then you're most welcome to consider taking on the course and become an instructor so that you can go and help more people out there to get, get healthy and happy, okay? So let's introduce our next um, our next um, speakers. Uh, they are Julie Barker and Jane Gordon. Now these two ladies here are fantastic. Julie and Jane are volunteer chairperson and treasurer of a nonprofit support group called Fibro Active, which was founded to help sufferers of fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and their carers. Both Julie and Jane are sufferers of the condition. Through the practice of Tai Chi and Qigong, they have managed to keep the condition under control. Both Julie and Jane are qualified instructors for both Deyin Tai Chi Training Institute and British Health Qigong Association they have introduced Tai Chi and Qigong into the support group and helped sufferers of the group to manage and contain the condition with noticeable success. They have received also recently the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service 
to com commendate to commendate the group's efforts and dedication in helping local community, especially sufferers of the condition. So as you can see, Deyin and BHQA are really full of what we call hidden with dragons and tigers. Hopefully you will be one of them in our family. So let, without further delay, I would find Julie and uh, I'll get her the, uh, you've done it. Have you make a, okay, Julie. you need to share sound yeah okay let's try again i'll share the sound can you hear it no okay wait i'll start from the beginning Okay, just bear with me one moment, it's coming again. Hi, my name is Julie and I'm the chairperson of Fibroactive. I've been... Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, it seems to be a little bit. I have shared the sound. Wait, wait um, let me just start again from here. I have been a sufferer for 38 years, along with a long list of other conditions, and have spent the past six years researching, training, and delivering a bespoke holistic program and helping members accept and manage their illness. Hi, I'm Jane Gordon, treasurer of the group. I've known Julie and her family for years, but about six years ago, just after being diagnosed with fibro myself, I met Julie and discovered that she too has fibro and that she was setting up a support group. I felt that I had to be involved. Was this meant to be? In 2020, it was announced that the Fibroactive volunteers had been successful in receiving the Queen's Award for voluntary service. And finally, we were presented the accolade on November the 23rd, 2021. You can see what happened on our website. So today we're just going to have a look at what fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome is. And then we'll look at um, how we brought Tai Chi into. Oh, sorry. To the group and the benefits of uh, training over the past few months. And at the end, we'd like you all to join in with us with the traditional eight brocades Qigong. To find out more, you can go to the fibroactive.co.uk website. So hold on to your dragon trousers. It's going to be jam packed 25 minutes and we'll begin. Our group program is called the Fibro 5. The five ways to fibro well-being. It is split into three main categories. Keep active with our Tai Chi, Qigong and Otago classes and gentle walks. Keep learning with workshops on nutrition, symptoms and guest speakers, etc. And emotional support with coping skills, arts for wellness and cuppa and chats. So what is fibromyalgia? It is estimated that 1 in 20 people globally suffer with fibromyalgia, which is a complex multi-system condition. Therefore, no single medication or treatment can fix fibro. There are just too many variables. The best approach to address um, each system within the body instead of merely treating the surface symptoms. And yes, fibro 
um, needs a multifaceted approach. Fibromyalgia is definitely not just pain. There are over 200 different symptoms in the syndrome. However, the five main symptoms include widespread roaming pain, fatigue, sleep disturbances, fibro fog and IBS. Each main symptom is affected by each of the others in a cycle that is very difficult to break. Furthermore, the symptoms are affected by our mental well-being. The lower the mood, the more the symptoms are increased. The conditions are deeply affected by stress at environmental, emotional and molecular levels. Basically, there is a complete onslaught on the central nervous system. Fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, also known as ME, are closely related. The symptoms are so overlapping that many people treat them the same. Fibro is dominated by pain and when exceeding limitations, our symptoms exacerbate and our bodies go into a flare. Whereas CFS is dominated by chronic fatigue and when we exceed our limitations, our bodies crash as we do not replenish our mitochondria cells normally. Both conditions overlap with multiple chemical sensitivity, which is one of the primary co-conditions to fibromyalgia and, chronic and CFS. Symptoms often flare due to the toxins in the environment, such as smells and toxic chemicals that are used in everyday products from laundry detergent, new upholstery to petrol and exhaust fumes. Many of us are unaware that our symptoms are constantly triggered by these toxins and we continue to surround ourselves in toxic environments at home, at work and outside and by the products we put on ourselves or consume. So we ask our students to attend Unperfumed. More information can be found on our website, just click on what is fibromyalgia. After a request from our members to try Tai Chi, we struggled to find an instructor. After seeing Chris Davenport throughout the summer for physio, Julie found a leaflet advertising Tai Chi classes, run by, would you believe it, Chris. So August 2016, a few group members signed up for the taster session with Chris. I was dependent on a mobility scooter at the time I could barely stand and my arms felt like bricks. I will admit at first I found it really hard. I would clock watch as the, the fatigue became unbearable. However, after the first course I began to walk again and my pain levels started to become more manageable. At this time I was going through a difficult and stressful period with our business and I had just been diagnosed with fibro. I wasn't too keen on trying Tai Chi, but I'm so glad that I did. From that first taster, I realized that I had not thought about anything other than Tai Chi. It really was a big stress reliever and I was hooked. We were so impressed with how Tai Chi had improved our health and well-being that we couldn't keep quiet about it. So now we had a long list of other members who wanted to try it. Instead of our group dominating one of Chris's taster sessions, Impact Physio suggested that Chris should come to the group. So we applied for funding from Public Health and brought Chris into the programme. We soon saw big improvements in our group members and the sessions were increasingly popular. One of our most outstanding case studies was a group member, male, 60 years old. He could barely get from the car to the hall on crutches. We were all worried he was too frail. His first class, we had someone standing behind him, which actually was me, and Chris was ready to say he couldn't carry on. But he was determined and he persevered. As the weeks went on, he reduced his dependency on crutches and started to walk with two sticks, then from two sticks to one. Then one day he forgot his stick. Now he can run through the whole form and occasionally 
will get up and demonstrate with us. However, he will not be recorded because he fears his benefits will be taken away and that's a debate for another time. As the classes grew, we became concerned how Chris would sustain the sessions with people starting at different stages of the course. Chris suggested that we trained as instructors and then we could assist him. I had been a coach in various sports for over 30 years, most recently a level one boxing coach. I thought my coaching days were over and at the time was a little anxious about my illness being so unpredictable. I was completely out of my comfort zone. I had avoided putting myself into positions where I would be watched or judged for most of my life. The teaching bit was not a worry, but the training bit caused me huge anxiety. I resorted to asking for help from a hypnotherapist, and with her help, I did it. We were able to split the sessions into three groups and develop members at their own speed. As soon as we qualified, we converted our evening group sessions to Tai Chi. Due to the unpredictability of fibro, we always work together to keep professional standards. We are like yin and yang. I know when to take over from Julie as I instinctively know when she is starting to struggle. We were then approached by Strictly No Falling at Age UK Derby in Derbyshire and they asked us to sign up to their falls prevention programme and develop a couple more classes and we even got a small pot of funding to start up those classes. As our students developed, we started a free Tai Chi in the Park practice session once a month. Some of Chris's students came along too. Lockdown happened and we had to adapt fast. We started Zoom sessions the following week for group members and Tai Chi classes. Zoom had been a lifeline to half of us, but those who do not have the internet, the technology or the skills have been isolated. We have found younger members, especially those with reduced mental health, have been scared to use it. Our classes initially continued on Zoom until we were allowed out to play. We kept the Zoom classes going for those shielding and the park classes catered for those who would only do face to face. So prior to lockdown, we had trained in Chris's classes and knew the forms reasonably well, apart from the sword. However, we started back in September face to face with a new improved falls prevention programme for all abilities, from which the income sustains the group. The break from starting new beginners classes and all the intense training we had undertaken has really built our confidence. Our forms are more fluid and our knowledge has grown. This has enhanced our delivery as instructors and we have both acknowledged that we can identify our growth as Tai Chi players and instructors. At the same time, we also keep ourselves grounded as we still realise we are at the start of our Tai Chi journey. Fibro symptoms can change frequently throughout the day and for beginners who are unconditioned they will need to start off in very short sessions being very gentle as we are prone to trap nerves, cramp and trigger pain. The fatigue can make your limbs feel like you are holding bricks. It takes five times more effort and energy to do anything. It's not just what you do at the time, you pay the consequences from 24 to 72 hours later with post-exertional malaise. The eight brocades enables everyone to take something away no matter how they are feeling. Benefits include it's a short routine so it's manageable. We can adapt the number of re repetitions. It can be easily followed without the need to remember the moves. It calms the mind. It prepares the mind for learning. It can be done seated, so therefore it's inclusive. The gentle movements are effective and it's fairly static, mostly facing forward. 
ideal for those who struggle to follow on Zoom. So if you'd like to get yourselves ready, we would like to invite you to go through our short warm up and then we'll go through the traditional eight brocades. We will see you in a moment. Okay, everyone, do you want to get yourself up and uh, get yourself some space and get ready to join Julie and Jenny? A bit of exercise. Right, if everybody would like to get into posture, standing nice and relaxed, and just roll our shoulders forwards three times, feeling all of that rotation. Nice and slowly. And then backwards three times. And bring your hands up to shoulder height. Turn your palms, bring them in, tucking your chin in slightly. Turn your palms outwards, push away and gently bow your head. We'll do that one more time. So lifting your hands, turning your palms, bring them in, push away and gently bow your head. So interlock your fingers, bring them up to chest height, push them away and turn your head to the left. Come back to centre, push your hands away and turn your head to the right. We'll repeat that once more to each side. Just lowering your hands down, we're going to do some simple side bends. So keeping your head in line with the spine, just lower your left hand towards your, low, your left foot. And come back to centre and then over to the right, right hand towards right foot. We'll go once more to each side. we're going to do hip circles so placing your hands on your hips those seated you're just going to rotate between your sitting rounds the rest of us we're going to start with small circles and get larger as we go around so just giant, nice gentle circles so once more I will change direction and get gradually smaller. I'm coming back to centre. I'm going to bring our hands up as though we're holding a bowl and we're going to turn to the left but push our right hand across the chest to the left, keeping your hips facing forward. Flatten the palm, turn it over and come back to centre. And then over to the right, flatten the hand and bring it back. So one more to each side. So I'm going to bring our hands into prayer position, taking our weight onto the right leg, step out with your left foot and soften your knees, come into a horse stance. We're going to push our hands up, raising up, don't lock your knees, opening your arms, palms facing down, gradually sinking down, turning your hands and coming back up. 
and sinking back down into both stance. I will do that one more, so pushing up. Opening your hands, softening your knees. It's coming back up. Into horse stance. Relax your hands. Lift out of horse stance. Take weight to the right. Step in with your left foot. We're going to bend forward now. So we're going to interlock our hands. Step the left foot forward and reach towards your foot. Just go as far as is comfortable to you, just to feel a stretch. Come up. Step forward with the right foot. And we're going to go one more to each side. Relax. And now June is going to take us through the traditional eight brocades. Okay, standing in posture, relaxing the shoulders and the knees, arms beside you, focus the thoughts. Hands round onto the dantian, right in for ladies, left in for gentlemen. Three deep breath breaths. Hands to the side, taking half a stride out, centralising the weight. Bring the hands out and up, keeping the palms facing outwards, looking up between the gap in the fingers at the top. Pressing the, the heel of the hand, turning the palms, bringing them down slowly down the centre line. Taking the hands out again, breathing in nice and smoothly. <clears throat> looking at the gap between the hands, turning the palms, breathing out. Breathing in. One more time. <clears throat> Into horse stance, sinking down with the knees, making sure they're in line with the ankles. Crossing palms, so the left hand is on the inside. Make a point with the left hand and draw back. Bring the hand back to centre on the outside of the cross, making two fists. Make an inside hand at a point and draw back. Bring the point back to centre, make two fists. Make a point with the inside hand and draw back. Bring the point back to centre, make a point with the inside hand and draw back. Bring the hand back round to centre again, lowering the hands, bringing the stance back in. Crossing the palms again, with the left hand on the inside, lifting the right hand up, 
towards the ceiling, left hand down towards the floor, pushing the heel of the palms in each direction. Coming back to centre, crossing the palms, right hand on the inside, reaching up. Back to centre again, crossing the palms, and up. Breathing out as we come down, breathing in as we come up. Bring the hands back to the cross in the centre, lowering the hands down. Bring the hands out to the side, we're turning to look back, to the left, turn the hips, the waist and looking over the shoulder. The back of the hand at the back of the head and hand at the back of the, the lower back. Coming back to forward again, arms out straight, turning to the front. Centre and to the left. Back to centre and to the right. Hands down. Back into horse stance again. Keeping the hand. On the neck line, sinking down, knees in line with the ankles. And we're going to do side bends, going over to the left, breathing out as we go down, breathing in as we come back up. Out as we go down, in as we come back up. And again. Keeping the head in line with the spine, not to allow it to drop. Coming back into stance, lifting the hands up, sliding them down that invisible wall. Taking the hands down as low as you can go, taking the hands behind the legs from the ankles up, massaging to the lower back. Keep that as a support as you bend forward, bend pelvis forwards, keeping the head facing upwards and looking straight ahead. Again. Down the invisible wall. Hands massaging the back of the legs, supporting the lower back. You push the pelvis forwards, keeping the head forwards. <clears throat> keeping the legs straight as you come down. Keep that support in place, don't allow your neck to drop back. One more time. Keeping the hands at your side, making two fists. We're going into all stance again. Sinking down, keeping the knees in line with the toes. We're going to push forwards, looking wide-eyed and angry at the back of the hand. Grasp the air, bring it back. Pushing through resistance, nice and slowly. One more time to each side. Coming back into stance again. Hands this behind your back. I'm going to heel lift onto the toes. Drop down a little way and then to the floor, nice and gently, nothing too high.
One more time. Bringing the hands to the sides, stepping feet together, bringing the hands round on the Dantian. Three deep breaths. to the sides. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Julie and uh, Jane. You two are insp inspirations and really success stories where Tai Chi can help people. And like them too, many of our instructors from the Yin Tai Chi Chuan Institute and Brooks Health Chi Gong Association, working tirelessly and selflessly to help local community during the last two years of uh, difficult situations. So really, a, a really hats off for them to for all of them too and many of our instructors. Okay, so let's get on to the next in, next speaker. Uh, let me just get to how. Next one is Keith Fenson. Now, Keith is an experienced Tai Chi instructor for 40 years, learning and teaching Chen style Tai Chi under Master Wang Haijin, a very good friend of our organization. He has been uh, actively promoting Tai Chi and Qigong to the local community and helped many people to get health and wellness through Tai Chi practice. Now, Keith is also training under the British Health Qigong Association and has obtained a qualified and qualified a level two health Qigong instructor certification. So uh, Keith is uh, promoting the tremendous health and benefits of this unique system of Qigong exercises. So today, I think he is going to int introduce to us uh, Chen style Tai Chi so that we can have a little taste. Okay, so let me get Keith uh, Fensum on uh, just give me one second. Okay, Keith, if you'd like to get yourself ready, I'm going to replace your spotlight. You can, you're ready now, Keith. Okay, I hope everybody can hear me okay. Yeah. Good. Well, that was rather a, a, a humbling kind of um, session to follow there, really. I was um, almost had some tears in my eyes for that. It was quite, quite amazing, and it sort of took me back a little bit. Uh, but over the years that I've been um, teaching uh, Tai Chi and, uh, and Qigong about the, the number of um, episodes of people coming to me and telling me about how it's improved their health in many, many different ways, some quite serious and quite simple ways as well. So it just goes you, the more you practice, the more you do of this kind of stuff, the more healthy you can become. And I'm also a prime example of that, having been told about six years ago that I needed a new hip, um, a replacement hip, and then refused to have it, and then worked on um, um, using my mind and moving chi down there to, to improve it, and then acupuncture, and then followed just recently by somebody called um, uh, a bone setter who is locally to me, a Chinese gentleman. Uh, and that really, really did, did make quite a difference. So, um, without further ado, um, uh, there's, there's a little bit of information about me from Tari at the beginning. I did start off um, when I was much younger with um, Shotokan Karate, and then I, I moved to Tai Chi, and then um, I found uh, the BHQ way uh, a few years ago and, um, and became an instructor and, uh, and really, really thoroughly enjoy uh, participating in, in the, the focusing. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about Chen style Tai Chi. Um, it's um, half an hour is really not very not very long to do anything. So very, very quickly, you hear lots of different stories and there are probably all of them are true. But the way we look at it is a, is a gentleman called Chen Wan Ting lived between 1600 to 1680. He actually, although there were martial arts going on in China before then, he actually created them put together in a more structured way um, tai Chi and uh, invented it, well, it brought in the unity of yin and yang, um, breath control techniques, 
and also the, the Chinese meridian um, uh, system uh, from the medical point of view. And more recently, um, a very, very famous um, Chinese uh, grandmaster was Chen Farke. He lived from 1887 until 1957, and he's kind of called the modern time expert. And he was absolutely perfect in everything that he did. Um, his hardness and his softness was absolutely perfectly balanced, this yin and yang. And he was really quite an important person in the in the development of Chen style Tai Chi and the and the spreading of the the um, this style around China and around the world as well. Today we are still very very fortunate to have two very famous grandmasters, um, Chen Zhengli, um, who lives, still lives in the Chen village in China, Chen Jiagao, and Chen Zhao Wang. Um, also, he lives in Australia now and both of them teaching all around the world. Um, my teacher is, as, um, as Master Tara mentioned, his grandmaster Wang Haizhou, um, a very, very wonderful, very humble, very kind, very gentle person, but absolutely awesome in his skills and his techniques. So really, really good, really, really good. So um, basic trading principles on, on um, Chen Star Tai Chi. Uh, there are many many, many principles, and we can't go through all of them today. Foundation is really, really important, okay? It's important in most Tai Chi's, but foundation really is important. Remembering that the kidneys hold the fundamental um, yin-yang, yeah? The prenatal source, um, vital for qi, okay? And we need to always have a relaxed body in, in, um, in Chen style and in all Tai Chi. And we often talk about the 70% rule, yeah? which is maybe if an arm is completely locked, yeah, 100%, you can't make it any straighter, yeah, we always have 70% rule, yeah, because the chi will flow much better through a soft joint than it does through a locked joint, okay? So very, 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 very important. Um, so a relaxed body is really important. And when you have a relaxed body, then the chi will settle down into the dantian, yeah? We talk about sometimes emptying the chest and filling the abdomen, okay? Moving the chi down, okay? Um, stimulates the, um, the, the yang quan in the feet as the chi goes down through the legs and provides rooting. And what rooting creates is a rooted lower body, which is very, very strong, for you say, from the waist downwards. We can say our legs have become like an oak tree. A very flexible middle section, which you can use as a as an axis for turning and rotating, and a very livened and flowing upper body where the body and the arms move in a, in a nice relaxed way, okay? So this is really, um, although we, we, we look at Tai Chi, we see our exter external movements, and this is what we practice and we do and we teach. In actual fact, all of Tai Chi, like Qigong, is an internal system, yeah? And we really need to think more about internal and what is happening inside us when we're doing when we're doing our practice. And one of the, there are many, many stories in, in, um, in, um, in Tai Chi, many, many things, but the, the one thing that I mentioned, if you nourish the roots of the tree, yeah, then the branches and leaves will flourish, okay? So the same with the body, yeah? Nourish your roots, bring the chi down, yeah? And the branches and the leaves and everything else will flourish, okay? Good. So now going on to um, what I'm going to show you a little bit, very, very little time today. The Lao Zha, yeah? Lao Zha is the old frame. It was the first really structured Tai Chi uh, system to developed in China with uh, Chen Wang Ting when he first started looking at all this kind of stuff in a more structured way. And uh, there are basically two routines. The routine one, which is mainly softness with some hardness in, in, embedded into it. And routine two, which is mainly a lot of it is hardness uh, with embedded softness. Okay, so the style I, I'm learning and teaching is the routine one. It's about 74 movements, takes a very, very long time to learn. And, um, but it's a very important um, uh, tai Chi form that if you were doing this practice in China, um, in the park or somewhere, people would recognize what it is immediately, uh, same as they would with Young 24 form and these other famous forms. Okay, 
So first of all, uh, what we're going to try and do a little bit of is some uh, what we call silk reeling. Okay, so silk reeling was developed by I think by Chen Zheng Li, and what he tried to do was to to take out certain elements of the form and just make them into quite simple and easy easy practice and just practicing and getting the feeling of the of the movement. Okay, so you need to feel the movement. You need to be relaxed and feel the movement, and feel, then eventually you feel the flow. Okay. Uh, the other thing with uh, when we're practicing is our palm. There's often people talk about well, how how what is the hand shape in 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 uh, in different different things. Well, in Chen style Tai Chi, we have something called the Chen palm, sometimes called the concave shingle palm. Okay, and the Chen palm is basically the three middle fingers yeah are fairly straight, and the little finger and the thumb just turned in very slightly, so they're opposite each other. And when you do this, this creates a little hollow in the center of your palm here, which runs through the your laogong point in the center of your palm. Okay, so this allows the chi to flow through the arm and through the hand. And if you're in a martial application, then then you can strike and you can use this this situation. Okay, so that's it for talking. Let's put a little bit of music on from here. Okay, so let's do some um, some silk reading. Yeah, to start off with just a little tiny bit of silk reading. Okay, so feet together first of all, standing nice and straight, arms relaxed, and we'll sink and step to the left. Okay, and then a little bit more to the left. Okay, just adjust your stance a little bit wider, soften the knees slightly, feel as if you are sitting on a stool. Okay. So from, from the sideways, if you sit down, yeah, push this back and the tailbone down very slightly. So you nearly have a nice flat pelvic area. Okay, so sitting on the stool. So this is back. You're nice and relaxed. And I'm not going to marry you, so you're going to be on the opposite side to me, but place your left hand on your left hip. So fingers pointing forward, thumb pointing backwards, and right hand, palm facing forward. Slight chin, chin palm and elbow, shoulder, nice and relaxed. Very nice and relaxed. And we do what's been called the first movement, which is single handed front silk reeling. So move the open palm a little bit to the side and then down. You should come across turning the palm to face it upwards, yeah. lifting up to about shoulder height, turn the palm to face forward and Pulling across, pulling across. Okay, so weight and weight shifting to the left, turning to the left. Is the palm rising up? Shift the weight to the right, turn the hand over, pulling across. Okay, low level breathing in, high level breathing out. Again, just nice and relaxed feeling. I turn to the side. I'm coming across, you can see the space between my hand and my body. Yeah. Shifting, putting across. Shift the weight. Shift the weight, turning with the waist, shift the weight, turning with the waist. One more. Good. Change hands, right hand and right hip, left hand start position. Okay, and move the weight a little bit to the left, hand turning. Moving across, nice and relaxed as the hand rises, shift the weight to the left, pulling across. And it's coming down, shift the weight to the right, turning with the waist. Shift the weight to the left, pulling across, palm facing away. And breathing in. 
breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. One more, breathing in. And breathing out. Stepping in, breathing in, and breathing out. And a little shake, just uh, swing the arms, just keep the legs a little bit. Okay, so uh, Lao Jar is, um, the, although we have two main proponents of Lao Jar in this, the, the, the age we're living in now, Chen Zheng Li, Chen Jia Wang, if you um, Google um, to look at Chen style Tai Chi, you may see lots of different variations on it. Yeah? Even for the Lao Jia routine one, lots of different variations. And even Chen Zheng Li and Chen Xiao Wang have their own take on it. So they're, they're slightly different. So if you, if you are with a teacher and you're being taught um, Chen Zheng Li, and then you travel and move away somewhere else and find another teacher, and they teach Chen Xiao Wang style, then you're going to have to forget what you've learned and start a new system again. So it can be quite difficult, yeah, um, in, in, in this situation. For a, for, for a student, it can be a little bit frustrating, but uh, but we have to live with this situation. Okay, so let's do some uh, little bit of um, Lao Jia. So I'm going to try and teach you, show you, show, well, I can't really teach you because I can't see you, but I'm just going to try and show you um, the first two movements, okay, nice and relaxed. So feet together, uh, hands just hanging nice and loose, not touching, not close against your legs. So a little bit slightly away, just, just, it's just so that it allows the arm and the shoulder just to hang nice and loose. So if you had them close, then you kind of lock that position. So just allow the arms to hang nice and loose and relaxed. And we sink and we step to the left. Good. Good. Let's come back in again. So when we're beginners, we normally ask people to lift their left, left leg a little bit higher and place it more advanced, a little bit lower step. Okay. The important thing to remember, soften the right knee, peel off the left heel. Yeah. So the toes leave the ground first. And then as you step, the toes touch the ground first, lower the heel down and weight moves across 50-50. First movement contains uh, six sub-movements within the first movement, commencing form and starting the form. So same movement as in Yang Star Tai Chi and many other forms, raise the arms. So raise the arms up, breathing in, shoulder height, turn the palms slightly, Lower the arms down, soften the knees. Arms finishing, palms facing the ground, fingers pointing forward, and just a little bit above uh, in front of your legs. Nice and relaxed. Okay. Third movement, you're going to do a little, tiny little circle to the right, and then you're going to move your hands up to the left as you shift your weight just a little bit onto the right leg. Okay, so I've got shoulder height, left hand slightly facing forward, right hand just slightly palm facing up. And then next movement, number four, we're going to rotate our hands and then we turn 45 degrees to the right, roll back on the right heel. Okay, keep the arms and hands exactly where they are, lower the right foot down, shift the weight to the right leg, pick up the left leg and step forward and keep weight back on your right leg. Movement number five, circle behind and then coming round facing the front. Left hand in front, palm facing down, fingers pointing to the right. Right hand, palm facing a little bit forward and about level with your right knee. Okay. 
Now we're going to step through into empty leg stance. So we just do a little flick forward with our left hand and a little flick back at the same time with our right hand. And we step through. We then bring our left hand in and right hand comes up, touches the left fingers, lifts up, becomes a fist. Left hand turns palm facing up. Fist comes down once. Up, as you lift up the right leg, down, and stop. Close. Yes, let's just do that one more time. So nice and relaxed, and sink and step to the left. One, raise the arms. Two, soften the knees, arms coming down. Three, a tiny circle, hands move up to the left. Shift the weight to the right. Four, rotate the hands, shift the weight to the left, roll back on the right heel, face 45 degrees to the right. Five, shift the weight to the right leg, pick up the left leg, and six, step. Keep weight on the back on the right leg. And hand circling the front, stepping through, empty leg stance, making the fist gently down into the left hand, picking up the right leg and drop. Good and close. Good. So let's do that one more time. This time I'll do with the, the numbers. So I'll do one to six will be the first movement, and then another one to six will be the second movement. And first of all, we sink and step, and this is actually part of the form in lounge arm. So body is nice and relaxed, shoulders relaxed, head feeling like it's been suspended, chin just tucked in, just very naturally. Nice and relaxed. One, raise the arms, soften the knees just very slightly. Two, pressing down, soften the knees more. Three, circle and lifting the hands up. Four, rotate the hands and turning 45 degrees to the right. Five, shift the weight, pick up your left leg. Six, step. End of the first movement. Second movement, Buddhist warrior pounds the mortar. One, circling, coming to face forward, weight a little bit onto your left leg. Two, stepping through. Three, right hand coming up into a fist. Four, gently coming down. Five, lift up the right leg. Six, drop. Loads. So when the fist comes down in the body, it pounds more to you. The thing that some people get, they think they need to do a, yeah, it's not this, yeah. It's the stamp, yeah. This can uh, sometimes hardly touch, okay. It's just in your mind, this bit here, yeah. And just come down gently, but with the foot, yeah, stamping on the ground. If you have bad knees, then obviously you just um, adjust things to your own requirements and have you, yeah. So just very quickly, let's just go through that just one more time. And sink and step. One, raise the arms. Two, pressing down, soften the knees. Three, tiny circle to the right, and then move the hands up to the left. Shift the weight to your right leg a little bit. Four, rotate the hands, turning, roll back on the right heel. Five, shift the weight to the right leg, pick up the left leg. Six, step, keep weight back on the right. One, circling, facing forward. 
two, little flick and then stepping through, empty leg stance, three, fist, four, coming down gently, five, lifting up with the right leg, six, stop. Close, hands coming in and down. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, about a minute left. And breathing out. Feet together. And Tai Chi salute. Good. Thank you. Well done, everybody. Thank you, Keith. Excellent, excellent introduction on the Chen style Tai Chi. Thank and you. Uh, as you can see, with the De Yin members and the BHQ members, we have all talents, all sorts of different talents. So uh, hopefully some of you who are members now may be interested in becoming an instructor. Do join us. And uh, now, let me sound. Could we do a group picture? because I know some of you may have to be coming in, in and out. So it may be a good time now to do a few good pictures before the next session. If you don't mind, please turn your uh, screen on so that we can see you and let's do something. Okay. For example, like a heart, everybody in front of your chest like this, everyone, can you see with the uh, heart? <laughs> Good, everybody look at the screen, do this. Good, make sure you see yourself as well with the heart. I need to do this because I need to press the button. <laughs> okay, everybody hold it. Smile because we've got a few pages. Please hold that still for us. Yeah, uh, hang on a second. Sorry about this. We need to uh, do that very uh, quickly. Okay, hold that still everyone. Look. Okay, one more, just keep holding still. Good, because we got another page, yeah? Everybody, if you, you haven't turned your camera on, would you mind turning your, your screen, your camera on so that we can see you? Unless you don't want to show because we're gonna use this. Okay, let's get on to the next one. We're gonna do a, a, another, another one like this. Thumbs up everybody. Good. Look here with the thumbs up. Smile. Big smile. It's the Chinese New Year, an auspicious time. Good. Give me one second. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, hold up there and keep your, wear the smile. Good. <laughs> Hang on. I need to do it because it's so many people attending today is fantastic. So uh, it will take me some time to go through the pages. Just give me, just bear with me. Yeah. Excellent. Hold your thumbs up, everybody. Smile and turn your screen on if you haven't. Okay, good. Fantastic. Okay, let's do one more. A very traditional Chinese greeting. Like this. Like this. Yeah, right fist, left palm, palm on the fist like this. Yeah, but don't block your face though. Yeah, on your chest. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Ready? Smile. Okay, hang on. Hold that smile for me, everyone. Yeah, because I, as I say, a few pages to go through. So smile, everyone. Good. Yeah, one, one more. Just give me one more second, and uh, we'll, we will be done. Okay. Smile, everybody. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. I hope everything's okay now. Let's get on to the next um, speaker. Okay, just give me one second. Let me draw, take finer, at least he, him actually. Now this is a very nice, good looking gentleman. And he is all the way from a beautiful island of Cyprus. And his mm -hmm. name is Tariq. Tariq is from the beautiful island of Cyprus. He has been a Tai Chi and Qigong instructor for many years, and he has also regularly traveled around Cyprus and Turkey to teach and help people in these countries to gain mental and physical well-being through these lovely Chinese treasures. 
Tarek is also a qualified De Yin and BHQA instructors, instructor waving the flag of De Yin and BHQA in Cyprus and Turkey. So let's welcome Tarek. You're thank on you, that, Tarek. Tarek. You're welcome. Thank you, Tarek. Uh, thank you for your nice words. Um, so your legs might be tired. And if that's the case, you can sit for just a few minutes. Um, this half an hour we will have together. Uh, we'll be mostly practice, but I, I would like to say just a few things about what we are going to practice. So if your legs are tired because of standing, or if your arms are tired because of doing <laughs> these things, <laughs> you can rest your legs, you can rest your arms, you can put your arms on your legs. Just, just a few things about what we are going to practice, then we will all stand up and do the um, practice. Uh, we will have a Ming Mu Gong or eye brightening Qigong practice together. Ming Mu Gong means eye brightening practice, eye brightening work or eye brightening Qigong. It's a very re recent Qigong set, which was uh, set just a few years ago. Uh, and it was tried on many students in a university, in a traditional Chinese medicine university in China with excellent results. So all the participants in that project, um, they received very good um, effects from practicing Ming Mu Gong, the eye brightening Qigong. And if you haven't tried it before, I think you are very lucky. You will have a taster session of it today. Now, most of us know that Qigong approaches the human holistically. It's not just the body. The human is not just the body, but it's the mind, the body plus mind and the emotions and the soul. So it's a very holistic view. But Qigong also approaches the body holistically. So if you want to strengthen your eyes, if you want to heal your eyes, it's not just the eyes, it's not just the physical eyes that we work. We work on the physical eyes plus on the internal organs, the energy channels, energy points, and the rest of the body. And the Ming Mu Gong is based on this understanding. So what we are now going to do together, we will be practicing um, and utilizing the energy in the whole body, not just the eyes. And we will do this with gentle moments. So it's suitable for any age. It's suitable for um, any health level. Yeah, you can be very fit or you can be uh, not so fit, but still you can do it easy, easily because it's not very challenging on your body. And through these gentle moments, we will also be guiding the energy and we will be massaging energy points and the meridians in the body. So it's a lot of fun. And I learned this from BHQA. Actually, I learned this from Tari. And I would like to thank Tari again for being my teacher, teaching me this. And now we will do a taster of it. We will not go into the details. I would love you to um, enjoy this practice and have a feeling of um, the eye brightening Qigong. Now, if you enjoy this taster, feel free to go to BHK website and look for instructors who are sharing this. So you can learn the full set from them. Or if you already have some experience in Qigong, why not check for the instructor training on BHK website? Because this year, um, BHK is also going to give uh, instructor training for Ming Mu Gong as well. And maybe you can become a, a Ming Mu Gong, I'm writing Qigong instructor yourself and share this treasure with others around you. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. Now I would like to play some music as we do our practice. Let me start the music. And now we will start doing Ming Mu Gong. Um, so how is the level of the music? Can you hear the music and my voice? Yeah, good, okay, very good, thank you. So let's start Ming Mu Gong now. 
Okay. Let us stand up. And the beginning position is with the feet together and your hands on your sides. And use this as an opportunity for noticing you have a body. Okay, how does that body feel? And notice your stance. Check if your stance is balanced, if your weight is distributed evenly to both feet. Check that you are standing straight, upright, but also relaxed. Notice your breath. And do not try to change your breath. Just notice how it enters and leaves your body. And notice your feet on the ground. And notice how the ground is supporting your feet and your whole body. And once you feel ready to start the movement, I will be like your mirror image. So if I step to this side, it means you're stepping to your left. So lift your left foot up, step to your left, and shift the energy, bring the weight to the center. As you inhale, let your hands rise up through your sides, all the way up. And also stand up on your toes, so your heels are up now. And gradually put the heels down, look up, look up through your hands to the heavens. Now connect with the energy of the heavens and move it to the space between your hands and then move this heaven energy in front of your eyes by lowering your hands. So my hands are now, actually my palms are now level with my eyes. And open your palms and move them a little closer to your eyes. And then close your eyes and receive this energy from the sky, from the heavens. Let this energy enter into your eyes. So your eyelids, your eye sockets, your eyeballs, even the nerves and the muscles behind your eyeballs, they receive this energy. Then gradually, Lower your hands a little more. Gently open your eyes. Massage the bottom, the lower part of your face. And then massage your chest. And guide the energy all the way down. All the way to the soles of your feet. And let's do this one more time. As you inhale, first the arms rise up. Then you, you raise the whole body up. Heels are up, you're standing on your toes. Then bring the heels down, look up. And your gaze travels through your hands all the way up to the heavens. And with your gaze, draw the, heaven, uh, draw the energy of the heavens down into the space between your hands. And then gradually lower your hands, bringing this energy down. And open your palms and guide this energy to your eyes. Close your eyes gently and just receive. Receive the energy. Let your eyes relax. Inside of your eyeballs, outside of your eyeballs, behind your eyeballs. 
Just relax. Then slowly move your hands down. Open your eyes. Hands massage the lower part of the face. And then the chest. And guide the energy all the way down to the soles of your feet. One more time. Inhale. Rising up. Put the heels down. Look up. Connect with the energy of the heavens. Bring it to the space between your hands. And by lowering your hands down, bring it further down. Level with your eyes. Open the hands and guide the energy to your eyes. Just relax and receive this energy. Hands move further down. Slowly open your eyes. Massage. Massage. Massage your body and guide the energy all the way down to the soles of your feet. Now this first movement is good not only for the eyes, but also for the liver. So those of you who know the um, basic principles of uh, Qigong and Taiji or traditional Chinese medicine, you know five different energies, the five elements or five phases of energy. This is about the wood energy and the liver, strengthening the liver and the eyes. The second moment is for the heart. It's the fire phase of the energy. So to do this, bend your knees, sit down, and your hands, they come together in front of your belly. Then slowly rise up and also bring your hands up to your chest level. Now, as, I, as we do this, we are gazing at our fingertips. Then extend your arms and look forward. Again, I'm your mirror image. So if I turn this way, it means you're turning to your left. Now, your left hand massages the inside of your right arm as you turn back. And you come to this position. This is the position you arrive at. Yeah, you turn back. The two arms make a straight line. Your left hand is open. It's an open palm. And your right hand is a fist. Now, look back. Look at the horizon. Look at the infinity. Usually we look very close distances, like the computer screen, the mobile phone screen, or the books um, page. Now let your eyes rest on the horizon. Then as you inhale, turn forward, open the fist, and again, massage your chest and the inside of your left arm, and look forward. Now from your right side, turn back. This time, left hand massaging the right arm and the chest. Now your right arm is an open palm and your left hand is a fist. And again, rest your eyes on the infinity, rest your eyes on the horizon for a little while. 
Then open the fist of your left hand. Start turning forward and massaging your chest and guiding the energy to your palms. Then open your palms and move the palms close to your face again like this. And close your eyes and receive this energy. The body relaxed, the eyes are relaxed. Just receiving this healing energy. Then close your hands, open your eyes. And as you bring your hands down, shift the weight to your right leg and bring the left foot in. Now we, we will do the same thing on the right side. So step to your right, bring the weight to the center, bend your knees, look at your fingertips. Rise up, bringing your hands to a level um, in front of your heart, still looking at your fingertips. Now extend your hands and look forward and turn from your left side towards the back. Again, your hand massages the other arm and the chest. Rest your arms on the horizon. Now, if you have a wall behind you, imagine you're looking through the wall to, to the infinity. So in this exercise, they're always changing of our focal point. This is one way of exercising our eye muscles. So from infinity, we will turn forward. So open your uh, right hand, the fist comes and open palm, massage your right arm, guide the energy to the hands. Now we changed our focus. I'm looking at the object in front of me, whatever it is. Now again, turn from the other side, turn back, and this time look at the infinity. Open the fist of your right hand, now right hand massaging the chest and the left arm and turning forward and guiding the energy to your hands. Open the palms, bring the hands uh, closer to your eyes and close your eyes and receive this energy. So this is a very relaxing, a very healing Qigong set. And this is our focus. Relax and enjoy what we do. And receive the energy. And palms together, open your eyes. And as you drop the hands down, shift the weight and bring the right foot in. And now the last moment. Um, the whole set includes six moments, six moments, and the closing sequence. Now we, we will we will be doing three moments because this is a taster workshop. So again, step to your left, bring your weight to the center, and as you sit, your left hand goes forward, and it turns into what we call sword fingers. So your index finger and middle finger is um, open. The other three fingers are curled. And your right hand is behind your back. And, and it's in a fist, in a fist form, yeah? And we are sitting and looking forward. Now, as I stand up, I also lift my sword fingers up. 
and then start circling my sword fingers. And as I do this, this is the fun part, with my eyes, I follow my fingertips. So follow your fingertips with your eyes, but please do not move your head or your, move your body. It's only the eyes that move. Yeah, one more time. And when your hand completes three circles in total, you stop here. Still, you're gazing at your fingertips. Open your left hand. Now it's an open palm. Make it straight. Bring it down. Now all the way until this height. I'm following my hand. After the hand comes lower than the eye level, I, I'm only looking forward. I, I now stop following my hand with my eyes. Now press the energy down, leading it to your feet. And close your feet, bring the left foot in. Now we will do the same thing on the other side to finish the set of movements. So, step to your right and bring the weight to the center. This time, your right hand will be sword fingers. And left hand is a fist and it's on your back. Yeah, so this is your posture. Okay, looking forward, looking ahead. I haven't started following my fingertips. Now, rise up, bring the hands up. The moment your hands cross in front of your eyes, because they are so fascinating, your fingertips are so attractive, your gaze locks onto your fingertips. And now you follow your fingertips with your eyes. As you sit down, exhale, hands come down. And then as you inhale, you rise up and your hand also rises up. We've completed the first circle. Now the second one, exhale, sit. Inhale, rise. And the last circle, exhale, sit. Inhale, rise up. Now when you come to this point, seal your eyes gazing the tip of your fingertips. Open your right hand, make it a palm. Move it down. Now, stop following your hand, just look forward. Press the energy down all the way to the soles of your feet. And then bring your right foot in. Rise up. And to conclude the practice and to bring the energy down, Inhale, gather the energy around you. Exhale, press it down. Okay. So thank you very much for trying Ming Mogong, I brightening Qigong with me. If you have any questions, feel free to write it on the chat and I will answer your questions. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Tariq. It's a lovely demonstration. And uh, I can I could see everyone was trying very, very hard and very concentrated. That made very, very, very good. Yeah, as uh, Tariq said, if you are interested in learning more about Ming Mugong, the best uh, option is to either attend seminars, which we will run in due course, or if you want to go further and help others with this beautiful exercise, then why not consider taking on the instructor course, which will be starting in March, okay? So for any information, please do go on to the BHQA website and you'll be able to find out about the course detail. Right, uh, we'll talk about it a bit more later, but let, let's get on to the next uh, speaker. Okay, just give me one second so that I could, uh, uh, hang on a second. Let me just find out. Next one is Carol Gascoigne. 
one of our very senior instructor. Carol has been a Tai Chi and Qigong instructor under the De Yin Tai Chi Chuan Institute and the British Health Qigong Association for many years. She is a level four health Qigong instructor and also a ITQF, international, IHQF, sorry, IHQF, International Health Qigong Federation awarded Duan Six practitioner, one of the highest Duan in Europe. She is also a specialist on long-term neurological conditions, um, mental health exercise oh, yeah. referral, uh, pulmonary rehab, uh, hang on, yeah, sorry, I heard somebody was talking, sorry, uh, and exercise for, for the cardiac, for cardiac and arthritis. Carol is also a member of the executive committee of the BHQA and also an international judge on health Qigong. She has a wealth of knowledge and experience in exercises for various medical conditions and has worked in hospitals in Derby and Nottingham area, helping patients in their recovery and rehabilitation. So let's get on with uh, Carol's lovely <laughs> training. Let me just find if I can see how I can get you into, uh, sorry about this, yeah, <laughs> close. Okay, let me find Carol and then I will make you Spotlight it. Okay, Carol. Yeah. Okay. All to you. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just wondering what to do about music. I was going to um, share it through uh, through the, the system, but I'll uh, I'll perhaps just play it uh, quietly in the background. Uh, okay. So um, I'm going to. Um, introduce you today just to a, a, a very short taster session on the Daoyin 12 health preservation exercises. It's a very beautiful routine and it is one of the options available on this year's instructor course and I'm aware that quite a few instructors have still to decide which course to take so um, I thought if I uh, just provided you uh, with this uh, introduction, hopefully you'll find it useful. I'm also aware that there are quite a... Sorry? Oh, some, uh, no. Okay, I'm also aware that there are some experienced uh, instructors today, uh, so I want to try and include something uh, for, for yourselves as well. Just, uh, you know, I know you know the movement, so just taking it a little bit more internal so that you can enjoy the relaxation uh, side of things. Okay, so just to give you a very... Um, basic introduction to uh, the Daoyin 12 health preservation exercises. Um, they are very, uh, they're very adaptable. They can be done by very fit people, um, sitting down. Um, I've even in one, uh, one class had a lady who used to do it lying down. She was paraplegic uh, with two carers and uh, she loved it. <laughs> and uh, the, um, Probably in, in my classes, it's, um, I think it would, I would say it is the most popular routine I teach. When we do, when we have request sessions, uh, it's always the one that uh, is the first to get requested. So um, the characteristics, as you know, all the routines have um, their own little characteristics and the characteristics in this routine tend to focus on a lot of gentle rotation of the arms and uh, through the wrists and fingers and ankles and uh, right down to the toes. So we actually use it in the arthritis and the MS classes. Oh, sorry, somebody on, not on mute. Okay, yeah, so.
Okay, could you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I think you were, you you were accidentally muted. Somebody oh. would. I. Yeah. No problem. You carry on, Callum. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, it's also very good for for reducing stress levels, which I'll be <laughs> very grateful of <laughs> by the time I've done this session with you. Um, so, uh, with that, I'm going to start just introducing the very first movement where we're going to prepare. So, just keeping your your feet together, and placing the tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now, if you bring your left palm and just place it, so your laugum point in the center of the palm is over the dantian, and the other palm is over the top. And then going, uh, if you can remember back to uh, 10 o'clock this morning when uh, they did that, um, a lovely session on the uh, young 10 when she talked about posture, just focusing onto that posture she talked about, chin tucked in, tailbone lengthened, crown of the head lifted. And just take a few seconds, if you like, just close your eyes and just focus on that breathing. When we normally start this routine, um, that if you've got the CD, you'll have heard there's a, a beautiful poem at the beginning just to prepare us. So what they're telling us to do in this poem is to um, close all our orifices, meaning just ignoring anything that um, is likely to distract us going, uh, going on around us, anything we can see or hear, just ignore it and focus on your posture. With the tongue on the roof of the mouth, you'll, if you've played the CD, you'll have heard them say, building your magpie bridge. Um, I always think of this as a, as a bridge between the mind and the body. And that bridge not only helps the physical body to stay relaxed and uh, become healthier, but it also helps the mind to feel calmer. So if you can, with this tongue uh, on the roof of the mouth, just try and inhale through your nose. Just a slightly deeper breath than you'd normally do. As you exhale, if you notice any tension in the, in the body, try and let it disappear with the breath. Okay, so this is uh, this is our preparation, um, and as Faye talked about earlier, just bringing that stillness into it. Now, if you just bring the hands down, okay. So the first movement in this uh, in this routine is beautiful name, the beginning of heaven's creation. I'm going to take you through the uh, the arms and the hands, sort of the upper body first. Uh, so when, uh, and I'll do it facing you, uh, and then I'll do it with my back to you later on. So what we're going to do is just lift up the arms and just visualize a gentle force lifting them up and the palms will be facing backwards. So there's no tension. And then uh, coming round, so your palms will be facing down. And then you'll be bringing them down in front of you. And then once more, palms facing backwards, gently rotating round. Just feel the thumb leading slightly on this rotation. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do with this, as we raise up the arms, we're going to just look slightly to the, the left on the first one and the right on the second. Okay, so this time just putting that gentle turning 
And some of the more experienced instructors I know will be doing the uh, breathing, but as long as you breathe, <laughs> that's the important thing. I'll know if you don't, because um, your lips will be going blue. So just keep sort of looking right, keeping rotation and just being aware of that very gentle rotation. It's very easy when someone says, raise your arms to just go like this, but just visualize that gentle expansion. Uh, a bit like, you know, the, uh, the, the sausage shaped balloons. Uh, just imagine one of those filling up. Okay, and then to the right. Beautiful. Okay, I can't see everybody, but the ones I can see looking uh, looking great. So um, now we're going to do the lower body, and um, and again a little bit like when we do the arms. You know, it's very easy when uh, you know someone says uh, step to the left. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, but we're going to just again just bring a little bit more focus into that now so when we do that we slowly bring the weight into your right leg and uh, by the way i'm doing it as a mirror hopefully you can see my my sign so um i'll be doing the opposite so just bringing the weight into the right leg slowly just releasing that left ankle peeling it up and then placing it down and slowly bring the weight across. And then as, we, uh, as we'll be going through the movements, we'll also be doing some gentle sinking and rising. So if you just practice that, the reason I'm just getting you to do that is to make sure that you keep your knees and ankles nice and soft. Okay, so with that, we're going to uh, put it put it together and uh, just have a a little practice. Well, I'd like, and, and as I've mentioned before, well, I'd like the more experienced instructors to do, you know, because I know you know the movements, but I'd like, if you can, to make it a little bit more um, internal now. And what we've been doing in some of our evening classes over the winter is uh, where, where possible, we've been uh, do, using this routine, we've been switching the lights out and doing it by uh, candlelight and uh, a, a salt lamp and you can just see the shadow of everybody else you can't see the details and it really gives you that opportunity to focus on what's going um ha what's happening with your body um externally and internally and uh, it's very good as well for helping you to feel calm so just slowly bring we'll go from the beginning Place your left palm and then your right palm. And just closing the eyes if you want to for a few seconds. Tongue on the roof of the mouth. Check your posture. And then use that breathing. If you if you become aware of any tension, use that out breath to try and let that tension disappear. And now you can bring the hands down and we'll go into that movement, putting the arms and legs together, see how you, uh, how you all get on. So if you're experienced, try doing it with your eyes half closed. And then just keep turning. Okay, sinking down, breathing out. Just focus on that gentle rotation. Looking over your right shoulder. I know I forgot to look over my left then. I'm so busy looking at the screen. And then... Just stepping back in again. And now we're going to do the same again, but this time we're going to go to the right side first. 
again, just being aware of that rotation. Just visualize that energy getting right down to the fingertips, coming down. This time looking over your left shoulder. And then stepping back in with the right foot. Okay, I'm going to do that again. This time I'm going to do it with my back to you. Okay, so um, just turn around. Okay, so just here we go, right? At the opening stance. Just taking a few, a few seconds. Eyes half closed, tongue on the roof of the mouth. And then slowly just bring your arms down, sink the weight into your right leg, then very gently peeling up the left and placing it down. And just visualize then that gentle force, lifting the arms as you look over the left shoulder, the palms are rotating and sinking down. Keep rotating, this time looking over the right shoulder, slowly bringing the weight across as you step in. And just nice and gently. And then we're going to go to the, stepping to the right, looking over the right shoulder. And coming back. Sinking, letting that gentle force, lifting up the arms and then slowly in the second start to bring the weight across as you release the right ankle and straighten up. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just do one more movement today, the second movement, which is, uh, again, another uh, very uh, nice name called the double fish hung on the wall. Um, the reason for that at the end of it, when we get into the stretch, it's uh, demonstrating the uh, yin and yang symbol where we see the two fishes of uh, different colors um, often in the pictures. Uh, with this one, again, we're still, there's a lot of movement uh, and, you know, going on in the, uh, in the hands, but we also need to uh, involve the waist a little more with this one. So, again, I do it uh, facing you, first of all. So, we we're just going to turn to the left and as before, not just turning as we would normally do, but just feel that gentle energy or force opening out. And then with the waist turning, coming back, so your middle three fingers are going to just rest on the pulse of your left wrist. Okay, like you're checking uh, that you're still alive. With your um, left foot, again, just peel it up. And at the moment, the toe is going to be pointing, then gradually place the heel down. There's, um, you will learn a little bit more about this on your instructor course if, you're, if you don't know already, but there's a lot of acupressure points in the toes and fingers. So we're actually stimulating those. Then as we come forward, using the waist, coming round and then this hand is going to rotate inwards so your laugung points are pressing together and your foot will be coming back in so you're going to now slide slide the hands along you might feel them getting a bit hot here as your laugung points cross each other this will be done together but i'm going to show you some right hand will be coming round to draw a semicircle up and with your fingers pointing in to your head and the other hand will be 
down to draw a semicircle um, downwards. So we end up like this. So we've got that circular shape. You'll feel everything stretching out with this one as well. And as I mentioned, uh, even people who always have cold hands very often find them going hot when they do this one. Okay, so we'll just do that to the right. So we just gently turn and feel the expansion. Now, using the waist, we're going to come back, gradually bring the weight into that left foot, peel up the right, pointy toe, and then heel comes down. As you slowly transfer the weight, push the palm round. And then again, hot hands time, just sliding them together. This time we'll try and do them together. Those two semicircles, just feel that stretch. And then even if you have, you've just been doing the natural breathing, try and breathe out as you just bring that hand down. Okay, so uh, I'm a little bit uh, aware of the time. So um, what uh, what we'll uh, what we'll do now is uh, we'll just go through all of that, and um, the, what the people that know it just try and do it either with your eyes half closed or closed, just so that you can focus on what's happening um, in, inside the body as well but um and if you don't know it i'll be doing it with you as a mirror image okay so uh, so here we go just coming round into our preparation movement so place the tongue on the roof of the mouth half closing the eyes Just be aware of how the abdomen expands and contracts. And then scan, scan the mind over the body. Check for, if you find any tension, just try and uh, let it disappear as you breathe out. And now you can bring your hands down by the side as we go into that first movement, the beginning of heaven's creation. So just stepping to the left. Arms are floating up as you look to the left and then the palms rotate. Now they're facing down and you're sinking down just with that softness in the knees and that Still continuing with the rotation. Palms are now back as you're looking to the right. And then you can just slowly release that ankle. And here, this is always a good place, regardless of your, whether you're doing natural breathing. Just breathe out as we complete the movement. And then stepping to the right, palms facing back, gradually rotating. And then sinking slightly as you exhale. And then looking to the left, right, still rotating. And then release and stretch. Okay. Now we're going to do our double fish on, on the wall. So just turn. And as you do so, just feel the expansion through the body and then come back check you're still alive feel your pulse slowly peel up pointy toe before you place your heel down using the waist just to guide the hands round, sliding them together and then drawing those two semicircles Looking slightly left, I think I forgot to mention that earlier, but just feel that gentle stretching and then breathe out. And then once more, just gentle turn, expand and come back. Get ready to feel your pulse.
slowly peel up the foot. Then you can place the heel down using the waist just to guide, guide the movement round. And then step in, sliding the laogong points together, drawing your semicircles, looking slightly to the right this time. And then breathing out to complete the movement. That's lovely. Okay, so um, I just can see it's approaching uh, one o'clock. So I'll uh, I'll finish uh, there. I hope uh, that you uh, found found that useful. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I'd done any more than that, I wouldn't have done it justice. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful routine, and hopefully, even if you know it, you manage just to get a little bit of uh, relaxation from it. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for uh, the excellent uh, demonstration and leading everybody through a couple of the exercises. Now, again, uh, this beautiful exercise is part of the Health Qigong series. And uh, anyone interested, uh, again, a welcome to uh, make inquiries. Now, um, let me just get this right first. Okay, good. So now we have come to the end of the morning session and there will be a small break, break, not break, <laughs> small break uh, from now to about two o'clock. Okay. Now, uh, I hope you have enjoyed and feel the benefits of these exercises our instructors introduced to you. Now, the festival, especially the morning session, really marks the beginning of an exciting year for all of us. De Yin and BHQA has installed fantastic seminars and courses for health and wellness enthusiasts. So if you're interested in becoming a Tai Chi and health Qigong instructor, and you could help people to reap the excellent benefits of Tai Chi and Qigong, then you should really have a look at our website and try to look at the courses, especially the instructor courses starting in March as the Health Qigong and the Tai Chi courses starting in September. And another exciting event I'd like to let uh, uh, sort of bring to your awareness is that after like four years, we are now decided to host an, an annual summer camp this year. We'll organize, and this year is the summer camp will be on a residential retreat format over four days in August. So it's going to be exciting. Lots of Tai Chi, Qigong, Tai Chi massage, meditation activities. Now, it is designed for people of all ages, all levels, and all disciplines, whether you are a Deyin member or you are not. You're most welcome to join in and come to join us uh, for a few good, exciting holidays. Tai Chi holiday, okay? Now, if those of you who are not able to come for the whole four days, you are, there, there are options uh, uh, for people who want to do, just to join, become a daily participant. So go onto our website, have a look. If you, come, if you can come for the full retreat, fantastic. If not, don't worry, we still offer daily delegation. So you can come and sign up for sp specific exercises for a specific day. Okay, now uh, I think I'll, I'll end it up here now, but remember the celebration of the Chinese New Year performance will be starting at two o'clock here. So we will have a lunch break. So if you like to stay and watch it, because it's got lots of exercise, lots of beautiful performance, singing, dancing, Tai Chi, Chi Gong, all mixed together and you know people from all over the globe so therefore, don't sign yourself out because we, there are only 500 people limited and we are predicting to be like close to that. So if you sign yourself out, you might have a problem signing yourself back in. So therefore, try to stay on, but you can turn your camera off, turn your sound off, have your, 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 your relaxing time, have lunch and tea or whatever, and we'll come back and see you later. Okay, good. Uh, is Faye, does Faye has anything else you want to tell people? I, and you're happy with Thank you, everyone, for coming along uh, to, to create 
a online togetherness or community. Um, I look forward to seeing you later, either for the online Zoom party, watch some of your excellent performance, or I see you later this evening at the instructors AGM, or tomorrow at uh, my uh, Tai Chi seminar. Uh, so where, wherever I see you next, have a wonderful uh, weekend and the great year of the tiger. Okay. Okay, okay. See, see you guys, guys later. later. Thanks, Master. Oh, right. Have a nice lunch, but don't, don't sign yourself off if you want to stay and watch the performances. Okay, just turn off your camera and mute yourself. See you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank You're you. welcome. Bye bye. Well done, guys. That was really lovely. Thank you all. Thank really you. Nice Thank to you. See Vicky. everyone. Be together again. Excellent. See you guys. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so I will keep this open. Keep this uh, meeting room open. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Adam, mom.